Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Lesson Study Review with us. This we are studying, well, this week we are studying the New Testament hope, and this morning's topic is hope beyond this life. But before we go into our discussion, we'll invite Elder Jarvis to pray for us, and Elder Thomas will do our memory text. Pray, loving Father, we thank you so much for this new day that you have given. We pray to God that at this time we will send your Holy Spirit to envelope our minds and our hearts. And as we receive your word from heaven, we pray that you may grant us your blessing as we do what you have asked us to do. Be with these moments. May we all be refreshed and revived in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our memory text comes from 1 John 5, verse 11 and 12 from the New King James Version. It reads, And this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Amen, amen. So we're going to go right into our discussion. We'll ask Ella Jarvis to give us what insights he has picked out from our memory text, and then Ella Thomas will come after. The insight for me is that in Christ, we will find all of our hopes being made alive. And it is really because of his sacrifice that we can pass from this death that has been sentenced upon us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So it's really the blessing that we see that has been provided to us by, the, the, by God in heaven. Yes, and I quite agree with Elder Jarvis there. The, there's great hope that we have. This text is saying that there's a testimony, and the, the apostle is testifying that this is true. This is something that we can trust. This is something that we can hold on to as, as God, as there is a God. This God has given us eternal life. And how do we get it? We get it by believing in his son, Jesus Christ. And it says that who has the son has life. So we guarantee life by faith in Jesus Christ. And this is great hope because it's to anyone who believes. And we know the well-known text, John 3, 16, that whosoever believes shall have eternal life. All right. So let's go right into our lesson this morning. Our first question comes from our lesson. And it says, the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, 15th century BC, wrote about a tribe that at a birth began a period of mourning because they anticipated the suffering that the infants would face if they lived to adulthood. So the question is, <laughs> Elder Jarvis, what is wrong about this ritual or do we find it logical? We'll begin with Elder Jarvis since it's a question on our opinion. So we'll begin with Elder Jarvis and then Elder Thomas will come and tell us what is wrong with this ritual and is it logical? Well, the, the, the fact is we have both optimist and pessimist within our society, you know, the one person may look at the glass of being half full and one would say half empty. So it really bears on our pro own personal perspectives. Yes, life has its challenges. Yes, life has its issues. And we're going to face them. Sometimes we mourn, cry, grieve, be despaired, happy, alive, buoyant, and you know, energetic, we will face a myriad of, of feelings and situations. However, the issue for us is that when you live having a hope, it really changes our perspective. But I understand what they are, uh, what this fifth century individual spoke towards 
yes, life is challenging. Yes, life is difficult. But I guess they looked at the glass as being half empty. So they didn't look at the positives that life can bring as well. It's interesting because in our culture and in our time, we normally celebrate. And, and sometimes even before the baby is born, you have baby showers and so on. And you have all these nice names and all these nice things and people are anticipating great stuff for babies coming into the world. As a matter of fact, we have baby dedication and blessings so that we bless them because we understand that while this life is can be difficult, as Elder Javis just said, this life can be difficult. Yet, there are so many positive things that we can look forward to. So, in a way, you could understand that people mourn in that time that they mourn because they were really just looking at the, the evils and the negatives that you know a child would have to grow up and deal with but of course as we know life is all about ups and down challenges the good and evil and so while you might want to recognize that you know this child is going to face some difficulties one should always also recognize that there are some good things that life brings and this child could be somebody who would bring some real positive to the world so what is wrong with that that thing? They only look at it from one side. You know, as Elder Jack said, they only look at it from one side. And that is what is wrong. Nothing is wrong with looking at it, that side, but hey, look at it from both sides. Amen. So we're going to continue our discussion. Now, Elder Jarvis, millennia later, there's an advertisement in America in the early 20th century that says, and I read, why live if you can be buried for ten dollars so ella javis tell us does this question make a lot of sense when you consider how messed up the world is how difficult it gets at times why live if we could be buried for ten dollars well i i would suggest that that was a brilliant piece of advertising for an undertaker or a coffin maker you know, um, they, they are really advertising their wear and they're telling you, hey, this is cheap enough, you know, come get your bargain now, <laughs> you know. Um, so, but I, I really I really don't see somebody's going to say, hey, I, I get, I'm getting a good deal and going under, so I'm going to take it and go now. But <laughs> it's just one of those unique things that life throws and i guess we can look back at it and chuckle because you know it, it's a lot more expensive now than ten dollars but really and truly i don't know who's going to take that offer to go and let me die now because it's cheap enough to get in you know i i remember this joke that said that death is is one thing that persons are rushing <laughs> rushing to go to because you know uh, people are dying constantly you know, so they seem to be a rush. So maybe we somebody can advertise some cheaper coffins so that now persons can, you know, capitalize on that day. I'm sorry. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting indeed. So Ella Thomas, now some people believe and, and it's sad, but many people have the ideology that when we die, that's it. And absolutely, there is no hope beyond. So in light of the resurrection, how would you approach a discussion with someone with this ideology? I think the first thing for me is logically to look at, at, at it. For instance, if there is no hope after this life, then why try to do good things? Why Try why ask for justice? Why ask for something fear? Why have rules and laws to to you know govern a society? Why are we? Why should we be interested in anything good if that is all that we have is this life? Um, it makes no sense whatsoever. So, but on the other side, if there is something after this life. Why not be interested in 
living this life so that you can have the best of what is offered for next life. Logically. Also, if there's no hope after this life, then obviously there must be no God. There can't be any God if there is no hope after this life. And again, this life, it's not worth living. But the Bible tells us that, obviously, what we are familiar with is death. And it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So if we know that there is death, definitely, then there must be an eternal life. And that is something then that gives us some hope. And then again, in John 3, 16, it gives us the idea. It tells us certainly, and that's a text that is more familiar, I guess, globally, that God so loved the world that he has given his only son, that whosoever believe might not perish but have everlasting life. So I think the point that Christ was raised from the dead, just to look back at that gives us the hope that we too, anybody who believes in Christ, will have that same hope of life after this life, which God has given freely. So I think um, I would start the argument from that point of view and hope that, you know, if it's an atheist I'm talking to, that there's some point in this life that they would you know desire because some people yeah you are an atheist but you believe in justice or you, you know there's some morality point that somebody is going to believe even if they don't believe in god and i think from that point we can work our way towards receiving this hope that there is something after this life and that something is greater than this life it's promised by god So I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. And the question says, what is Paul saying here about how closely related Christ's resurrection is to the hope of our own resurrection? Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 19, the King James Version says, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there be no resurrection from the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised up, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead not rise, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. The fact is, the Apostle Paul was just making a logical argument because our being raised from the dead is predicated on Christ being raised himself. God has promised that we will be raised because he raised his son. And in so doing, we can have hope hope in what is going to happen in the end because Christ was the forerunner for us all. Now, Paul is just saying, listen, if he's not, if he is not risen, then to, for us, all of it is a scam, a sham, a shame, and we're just going around telling fanciful tales. And there is no hope after this life and, and everything will perish when we die. But if it is so, 
then if Christ is, is risen, then we have this hope and we can go on living uh, because we know in the end what will happen and what God has said will surely come to pass. We're posing this question to both our guests, beginning with Elder Thomas and then Elder Jarvis will come after. Now, our lesson tells us, think about how precious our hope and faith is. Why must we do all that we can by God's grace to preserve it? I think simply because outside of that hope, there's nothing else that we can hold on to. There's nothing whatsoever in this world that is as promising and as good as what God has offered. So with this faith, I think we could, we should grasp it with all our strength, all our might, and don't let go. Because everything else is like a drowning man grabbing after straw. Anything else in terms of saying that we're going to be saved, we're going to have some peace of mind somewhere. And, and it reminds me of a song somebody sings. It, it sounds good. The song, the, the lyrics, my, the music I know is, is very mellow. It, it's kind of catchy. Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine there's no country, you know, and, and those things. But then imagine all the people living in unity. And I, I, I don't know where that idea could come from, living in unity without God. So whatever there is that anybody else would want to hold on to, I think all will fall apart when death comes. But, but this hope that we have comes together after death. Well, for me, what I think about is our faith is the connection that makes life worthwhile if, if we really think about the fifth century greek historian who speaks about the perils of life and we need to just cry because of all the ills that we're going to face then and we can tell that that is a life without hope we just know it's just a matter of going through the circles of issues suffering death despair and there's nothing to look forward to but it changes your perspective when your faith is bounded in what god has said in the promises that god has made to us if we overcome and the benefits that are to come hereafter yes we know that this life is a life of difficulty it's a life of challenges sin came in and made it what it is but we have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord and the hereafter where sin will be done away with and we will experience something that we do not know uh, at this point. And it is life blissful, glorious, joyous, and eternal. Amen. So we've come to the end of our lesson this morning and and we're speaking about hope. So when you look back at our lesson, what we've discussed for this morning, what are your takeaways? We begin with Elder Thomas and Elder Jarvis will end off for us, sharing with us what you have learned from this morning's lesson. I think my takeaway from this morning lesson is that while this life is difficult we have something that can comfort us even in the difficult moments of this life the most difficult moments that we could have in this life there is something to comfort us and that is that the reality of god sending jesus christ to pay the penalty for our sins he died he rose again from the grave that is not just a story in a book that is history, actual events that took place. He was risen. Therefore, we have that evidence that while we believe in the resurrected Jesus Christ, God's grace is sufficient to guarantee us a resurrection after this life. So while we go through stuff from time to time, be encouraged, 
sometimes we become discouraged because of what we're facing, but we can always be encouraged by looking back at the fact Christ was resurrected from the dead. And even though we die, believing in him, we have this great hope of being resurrected and living, like Elder Jarvis said, a glorious life and an eternal life. Well, I would just like to use these two verses of John 16 and 17, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I believe that here lies the full essence of our faith. Believe on his word and we will be saved. Amen, amen. And we are so grateful that you could have joined us for our lesson study this morning. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when we discuss the topic, I will come again. See you tomorrow. Don't be late. Invite a friend, share the link as we continue to study together.